Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very, very senior and accomplished professional from Sydney, Australia, Mr. Jared McGrath. Jared, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ash. Lovely to be here. Thank you. Jared is the founder and CEO of Smart WFM. Uh, he's the author of two books, The Modern CEO and The Digital Workforce. He's founded several entrepreneurial ventures, and Jared has a strong focus on philanthropy. So Jared, before we talk about Smart WFM, tell me a little bit about your own journey uh, in brief. I grew up in the country, Ash, mm-hmm. and I always had a love for business, and I've always had a love for people. And I remember growing up, I started my first word processing business back in the days of dot matrix printers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I used to type assignments for university students and they used to pay me for for typing. But I was always, I think, ahead of my time. And and we used to be able to print the assignments in color way back in the, in the early eighties, because we (laughs) used to use different typewriter uh, ribbon colors. So, so I, you know, I started doing that and then, I then moved on to discotex and running music and then uh, did live band productions and then started some art businesses in the 90s, uh, which were arguably one of the world's first online art auctions. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I've, I've just loved to push the boundaries and, and and I love to work with people across different industries. Mm. And at more recent times, I've I've been fortunate to run a, a human capital management consultancy. This is the second one I've had now. Mm-hmm. And I think like you in the discussion we had in our pre-chat, I, I love to give back. Um, and that's really why I've written the books and why philanthropy is important. Amazing. Amazing. So let's talk about Smart FM, Smart WFM, which is a global workforce management and human capital management consultancy. Can you give me a brief overview of Smart WFM and its core services? Sure. So we're a consultancy, so we don't sell any products. We Mm. just sell the services of of the people that that work in the business. Right. And we really solve three problems Mm. for our customers. So when our customers come to us, they normally come with us with compliance problems. So that is ensuring that we actually pay people correctly. So we ensure the right amount of normal time or overtime or double time penalties, et cetera. Uh, Customers will come to us with productivity uh, problems or challenges. So that's the second thing we do. We help customers with their productivity. Mm -hmm. And we do it in a very specific area around ensuring the optimal use of people. So the right person, the right place, the right time, the right cost. Correct. So, you know, if you enter a supermarket, you don't want to wait in a queue for too long. So we mm-hmm. try and ensure that the, the queue length is is minimized uh, and, and the sales revenue is maximized, for example. Mm-hmm. How amazing. And, and then the third area that we focus on, which is really topical these days, is is experience. Mm-hmm. Whether that's the experience of the, the, the people in our business, whether it's the experience of the people for the customers that we work for or the customers customers so mm-hmm. so we ensure that we we make the, the the human experience or the people experience the best we can mm. and in the three areas that you just spoke about what are some of the common challenges you encounter uh, when you work with organizations I think from my experiences people often think that you can put a technology solution in and you're going to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. But the technology is really only the piece of a a puzzle, and there's three pieces to the puzzle. Technology is one piece. Mm -hmm. People is another piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And then in in days gone by, I think people would have called it process, people process technology. Mm -hmm. But these days I'd broaden the process uh, heading to say the environment in which you work in so Mm -hmm. whether that's remote environment whether it's a hybrid environment whether it's uh, in an office or or whatever it happens to be so I think that the the, the big challenge is making sure that you actually balance all of those three things together to achieve a Mm. a business outcome Mm. 
And you just spoke about technology. What role does technology play in your approach to workforce management and human capital management? A tech, the technology is the enabler, but it's the conversation I generally like to have last. I generally like to start with an organisation understanding what are their goals and objectives mm -hmm. and what are they really looking to achieve yep. because the technology certainly will enable these days, but balancing that people, technology and environment will actually really enable you to achieve those business goals mm. and, and get those right experiences for your people. Mm. Very interesting. Uh, my next question is that uh, how do you help organizations to navigate and adapt to the evolving remote and hybrid work environment? And you spoke about this before we started recording. Even your office, you said, is now uh, you know hybrid probably. Mm -hmm. It's it's an interesting one. We in in our business like to call it digital muscle, right? And 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 what we what we really define by that is mm -hmm. it's it's becoming future fit for mm -hmm. whatever the future is actually going to behold. And right. and and another word you could use for muscle is intuition. Mm -hmm. you, you need to be able to take what is happening in the world around you at the moment and and very quickly take that and adapt to where you're actually at. Right. And you know, I think hybrid work or remote work is is a is a is a is an outcome of where the where the the world is at at the moment. Mm -hmm. But that digital muscle or that digital intuition enables you to most effectively adapt mm. to where that is at. Mm. Um, but if I but if I look at something a little bit more um topical perhaps and this is probably mm. just Jared's view of the world now. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think one of the challenges with businesses is trust. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of businesses out there that have a trust issue. And I feel from my perceptions is that a lot of organisations want people to go back mm -hmm. because there's a trust issue. And uh, I I just, I wonder whether, you know, the, the answer sits somewhere in between all of that. Mm -hmm. No, you're probably right. You're absolutely but, you know, there is also a lot of discussion uh, on data analytics and work for metrics. And I was speaking to some other people who are actually using artificial intelligence for workforce uh, or human capital management. I'd love to get your perspectives. It's, I'll probably answer that just with regards to my own business, mm -hmm. um, because, because it's quite a, a topical conversation that, yeah. that, that, that you broach on there. And so we're we're a very data driven organization, right. and we we do things like check in with our employees and our our team members regularly about their wellness, how they're feeling. We do regular e NPS surveys, and and we get outstanding results from those surveys. Mm. But it's because we actually utilize and analyze the data that we're given that actually helps us improve so a lot of organizations will get the data and then they're not quite sure what to do with it mm. we will take it and we will actually analyze it and and the first round of analysis that we do these days with the data is we put it through the, the generative ai layer mm. and we actually get the the ai to do the first part mm -hmm. parts of the analysis for us because we get so much data back right we we now use the ai to do the first pass of the analysis and then we apply the human lens to mm. it and mm. and i think this is just going to become more and more prominent over mm. time but but i think it's acting on the data and and using the technology and the human to actually get the the, the best outcome and and i think it's a it's a really exciting time where we're at at the moment because i i think we can not just have step change improvement now, but we can have almost exponential improvement because of the because of what's around us. Very interesting. And uh, you know, when you look at uh, the future of work and the whole world's talking of the future of work and how it's going to change, I'd love to get your thoughts on what you believe will be some of the biggest challenges when it comes to workforce management. So I, I think it sort of comes back to something that we spoke about towards the, the start of our discussion in that a lot of organizations think that you can just 
use technology to solve a problem and you don't have to talk about the the people impacts of that right, right. and and i think what's going to happen with the technology layer roll forward a few years from now the technology layer will almost be abstracted from us mm. now we have people go and can understand business requirements configure technology to meet the business requirements roll forward a few years from now we will switch the technology on and it will work it, it will just solve the business challenges that we're looking to solve and it will it will it will actually be configured almost out of the box mm -hmm. to solve our specific business problems and our specific business challenges to give us the right. outcomes so what i think that's going to mean from a people perspective mm -hmm. is that people will actually come back from the technology and become more people-centric in mm. the way that they operate. And they'll have to be really cognizant of mm. people, purpose, um, emotion, and, and really aligning all of the, the human side. And, and so I think technology will become less, it will become uh, ubiquitous almost, mm. and, and the people side will become very top of mind. So how do we educate our leaders? How do we ensure that they can deliver our business outcomes? Mm. So I actually see all the technology making us more human. Amazing, amazing. Um, so one more question relating to your work, and then I want to move to your books. Uh, Jared, this is the age of startups and small and medium enterprises. What advice would you give to young entrepreneurs uh, to be able to develop and enhance their workforce management practices? So I, I think I'm just going to give a real simple analogy. Mm -hmm. Take take a blank sheet of paper and draw a human being in the centre mm -hmm. of that blank sheet of paper mm -hmm. and put the human at the centre. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that would be my core piece of advice. Mm -hmm. Make sure you remain uh, people-centric. Mm -hmm. Then I would say make sure that as an entrepreneur, you're also commercial mm -hmm. because let's face it, we have to make money. Even mm -hmm. though it, the world is all about people, mm -hmm. we still have to make money because if we don't make money, we won't exist. Mm -hmm. And then the third piece of advice I think I would give a young entrepreneur is back yourself in, but if you aren't going to be successful, pull the pin quick mm -hmm. because there's no point in staying and hanging on to a dream that's not going to make you money and not going to put people at the center of what you do. Great response. Thank you. So let's talk about your books, Jared. You have two books, The Modern CEO and The Digital Workforce. And I'm going to ask all our viewers and listeners to go and check out Jared McGrath's book uh, on Amazon. I'll go and check it myself. So tell me a little bit about both your books and what were your hypotheses when you wrote them? So I I wrote the first book unexpectedly. Uh -huh. I, I wasn't expecting to write my first book. And when I exited my first consulting company that I that I owned, mm -hmm. a lot of my team said to me, Jared, you've got a lot of knowledge. You should mm -hmm. write a book. Correct. And and I laughed at them because I I was never going to write a book. And then I started up smart wfm and i realized that if i wanted to differentiate our business from other businesses mm -hmm. if i could write a book about workforce management and the digital workforce mm -hmm. and i could go and talk to customers about the typical problems that customers have mm -hmm. because customer customer outcomes and the way in which you achieve the outcomes is a repeatable process mm -hmm. and i thought if i could document all, all of this so that I could actually give the customer a, a, a recipe almost for digital yep. transformation success around that workforce management space. Mm -hmm. And I could actually give my team members a roadmap or a career path, because what I wrote about in the book is really what we do as a business, mm -hmm. which gives career paths, then it was a it was a win-win outcome. So mm -hmm. I so I wrote the first book, The Digital Workforce. Um Loved the process, although it was very bumpy because mm -hmm. uh, when you do something for the first time, it was very hard. But then realised I actually had a love for writing and a love for giving back. Mm -hmm. And and because I'm very people-centric in the way that I go about things, I thought 
why don't I just start writing about what I call the people imperative, mm -hmm. which is all about just getting the, the greatest value and achieving the greatest value from people. Mm. So, so I then went and wrote my second book, The Modern CEO. And, and so the first book was on my niche of workforce management, but The Modern CEO is a much broader book mm. on leadership. And, and the modern CEO was really testing the hypothesis about leading with a people-centric philosophy and being able to achieve greater business outcomes. Mm. So I did a research project for a couple of years um, and, and culminating in a number of CEO interviews with quite senior CEOs, mm -hmm. validating these hypotheses and interviewing people that I felt were wonderful examples of human-centric leaders. Mm. So... So I just finished the the uh, second book, The Modern CEO, and it had four key themes in the end. It had uh, purpose. Mm -hmm. you, you needed to be really cognizant of, of purpose. Yeah. Um, make sure that your leaders were, were well equipped. Make sure you put your people at the center of everything that you do. Mm -hmm. And the fourth key theme, which was a little bit of a surprise at the time, but in mm -hmm. reality it wasn't, you need to have an operating model that can support mm -hmm. all this. Mm -hmm. So very interesting, very interesting. So your new book is the modern CEO. Correct. Okay, wonderful. I've and, got them uh, here, of course, Ash. Yeah, be sure. <laughs> they're they're never too far away. <laughs> Absolutely fascinating. And you know, and, and as any author, uh, I'm sure you're very, very proud of your books. So you must talk about your books. So my next question to you, Jared, is that based on all the work that you have done and your books. What key challenges, in your opinion, do CEOs face when navigating the digital workforce and how do they overcome them? I, I think the key challenge today is really understanding what purpose means. Hmm. And I think where we're at today is that the younger generations are driven by purpose. Hmm. And so when the younger generations are looking at an organisation, they're going, does the purpose of this organisation align with my or my purpose? And if it does, then we've got a go forward position. Yeah. I think the challenge for CEOs is being really clear about the organisational purpose so that ultimately the organisation itself and the people that may want to work there can align. Mm. And, and, and so if I take that, you know, to the next level of detail, organisations these days need to think systemically mm -hmm. because I think in the past, too many organisations have worked in a, in a silo type mm -hmm. nature. And if you really want to be purpose driven, it's very hard to work in a silo. Mm -hmm. So the challenge for CEOs is to move their organisations to a more flatter organisation, a more networked type organization mm. that's empowered by people empowered by teams mm. and for a lot of organizations and for a lot of ceos mm. making that shift is very difficult because of what we spoke about earlier on you yeah. also have to be commercial in the way that you do this correct. because you still have to make money at the end of the day correct well said so i have time for two more questions for you my next question is what are some of the ethical considerations CEOs should keep in mind when implementing digital technologies because there is a lot of fear everywhere. First, it was what will technology do to my jobs. Now, of course, the latest one is what will chat GPT do to my jobs. Mm. What are some of the things that a CEO should be considerate of? It's a it's a really interesting and topical question again. And and I wrote about AI in the modern CEO, and I, and I only wrote about one topic on AI, and that was ethics, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of experts around AI, and I'm sure. not an AI expert, sure. Sure. but but from a people perspective, ethics is everything. And so I think that the challenge for CEOs is just making sure that they've got an ethics framework that works for them and works for their organisation. Mm -hmm. So that, for example, if you want to use AI, just make sure that you've got a, a, a consideration around contestability, for example, mm -hmm. so that your people or your shareholders can come back and, and have an open channel to, to perhaps challenge something mm -hmm. when it comes to AI. Mm -hmm. Be very transparent about your algorithms, the way they work, mm -hmm. and, and ultimately make sure that 
that there's a human responsible if it's a human related outcome mm -hmm. from from an AI decision. Mm -hmm. So I, I I think it's really just having having a, a an ethics framework that works for you and works for your organisation. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And my last question to you, Jared, and uh, this is for the many, many people who will listen to our conversation. Based on all your understanding of human beings, and a lot of my viewers and listeners are young, under 34, what would you say are three lessons you would want our viewers and listeners to take away from your own understanding of people, human man, human uh, management, workforce management, um, and from our conversation? So the first thing for me, I think, is you need to be able to tell a story. You, mm -hmm. So so storytelling, I think, is, is the first outcome. Mm -hmm. I think storytelling is something that's just so critical to achieving a human-related outcome. Correct. So so that that would be the first thing I would say. The second thing I would say is just ensure that you put people at the center of everything that you do mm. because it, it, that that is our only differentiator in in any organization the only differentiator that we have is mm. a human being anyone can get the algorithm anyone can get the tech but but the people that actually shape that mm. is is a true differentiator so so put people at the center mm. and the third thing um, I would say is probably an old fashioned thing, but I, I think it's really simple. It's trust. You, mm. you, you've got to be able to trust people, um, especially in this day and age. There's so much rhetoric. There's so much. I can post something on social media and it, it, is it true or not? I, yeah. I don't know. Mm. Um, so so I think trust would be the, the, the third Very outcome that I would say. And on that note, Jared, and your three wonderful lessons, you know, we need to be able to tell a story. I think that's such a powerful uh, technique we all need to develop. Second, you said was put people at the center of everything. And the third one, which is so important, which a lot of people forget, is to trust people. Mm. Thank you so much for speaking to me, Jared, about your own journey. Thank you for speaking to me about Smart WFM. I think I've picked up some interesting pointers from you on people management, human capital management, workforce management. Thank you also for talking to me about both your books, The Digital Workforce, and your new latest book, The Modern CEO. Thank you again, and good luck to you. Thank you so much, Ash. I've loved the conversation. Thank you for listening to The Brand Called You videocast and podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website, www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.